our great pleasure to welcome Juan Jose Reyes uh, to the store. Juan was actually the first kind of outside partner that we worked with here when we opened the store three plus years ago. Uh, Juan ran the Miami Street Photography Festival as well as the Miami Street Photography Club. Uh, we started doing meetups here almost immediately after we opened the store. So he's been a great partner of ours since the inception of Like a Store Miami. Uh, and as I mentioned, Juan is the founder and executive director of the Miami Street Photography Festival. How many of you all have been to the Miami Street Photography Festival? All right, pretty good, pretty good. If you haven't been, you've got to go this year. It's a fantastic festival, and it's right here in our town. In fact, it's the biggest street photography festival in the whole world, uh, right here in Miami. And a lot of people don't even know that it, it exists, so we're trying to help increase awareness for that. Uh, the festival began, Juan, was it five years ago? Yeah, it'll be five years. Yeah, five years ago. Um, it showcases the best contemporary street photography viewed through the eyes of emerging photographers in the genre. So a little more about Juan, he also writes the street photography blog, Out for a Walk, uh, which I'm sure he might show you some images from and uh, give you a link to. He started shooting street photography after taking workshops with Alex Webb and Jay Mysell in 2009, and he developed his street smarts directly through shooting with Bruce Gilden in the streets of Miami. I believe it was the streets of Overtown, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Juan Reyes. All right, thank you, Peter. Welcome to Street Photographers Anonymous meeting. <laughs> My name is Juan, and I'm a street photographer. And yeah, very happy to be here tonight. And thank you, Peter and, and David and Kirsten and Louis for hosting the event tonight. The Like Astor Miami is a great partner, and they they have been with us since the beginning when we started the the festival. So we're very grateful uh, for for their hospitality and for their partnership. So, yeah, my name is Juan Jose Reyes, and a lot of times people ask me, yeah, if I'm a photographer, and I prefer to say, no, I'm a street photographer, implying that I don't get paid and I don't make money <laughs> with the photographs that I take, because street photography is a lot of times like that. And so tonight I'm gonna talk about street photography. Some of you may be familiar with what street photography is, some of you may not, so feel free to ask questions and I'll tell you, I'll answer the questions to the best of my abilities. And I've learned a lot through, of street, about street photography over the last five years just by being in contact with all the, the great speakers that have been, been coming to our event. And um, so I'm going to talk about a little bit of street photography, what it is, what it isn't, and show a little bit of uh, samples of the classic street photographers uh, of the 20th century that started the, the street photography genre in a way. And yeah, I'm gonna show a little bit of my pictures as well. And then I'm gonna show you some of the, uh, the, the finalists of last year's um, event. Yeah, so, um, um, and let's just see. So, and like, and like Peter said, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask the questions or stop me if you have any questions about the pictures. Or, um, oh, and, and, okay, yeah. So, you guys know what this picture is? This, this is the first photograph, photograph of people on the streets. Uh, it was done in 1839 by Daguerre, who created this very complicated process of uh, developing film. But it's, uh, it's actually the first photograph ever recorded of people on the streets. And you can actually say, where, where are the people? You can't really see, but there is actually right there in the corner. Um, so very hard to see, but it's somebody getting a, their shoes shine. So street photography, in a way, has been, has been going on for a long time. And over the last five, maybe six, seven, eight years, has seen a lot of interest or renaissance almost and you hear a lot about street photography and and street photography is about taking candid pictures of people or or in in public places may or may not have people and it started the like i said a long time ago and as you can see i'm gonna have this chart and people have been doing street photography for a long time 
And a lot of times people also ask me, what are, what, is it is street photography the same as documentary or photojournalism? And a lot of times the, uh, the lines sort of overlap with documentary photography or photojournalism. And well, the reason for that is because a lot of people, a lot of the photographers that started the street photography genre were, were documentary photographers and were for, uh, photojournalists. Um, but there is a little bit of a distinction and there's always debate about that. And documentary photography usually has some sort of theme or s subject that the, the photographer is shooting uh, about. News, uh, photojournalists have some uh, news events. And street photography is about just paying attention to everyday life. And it doesn't have to be a particular theme or subject. And, and the picture stands alone by itself. And the, when we talk about street photography, a lot, uh, we all hear, we all remember the name Henri Cartier-Bresson. He is the one that was more, uh, most associated with street photography uh, when he started shooting in, in, the, in the 30s and 40s. But before Cartier-Bresson, there were other photographers in the late eight, uh, uh, 1800, 1800s and uh, early 1900s um, that were already doing um, street photography or documentary photography. We have um, Eugène Aget, Cartes, Puigi, um, were, were shooting already before Henri Cartier-Bresson. And I'm going to show some of these, some of their photographs. We're going to show see some of the photographs of Cartier-Bresson. And, and the other photographers during the middle of the century as well. Just want to show some samples. Uh, Eugène Aget was uh, a French photographer that was born in 1850, so he was shooting in, in the 1890s and early 1900s. And he uh, actually documented the streets of Paris. He actually set to go out and document the streets of Paris because there was a time that there was a movement that they wanted to preserve all the districts in Paris. So he made a, his mission to document the street. And so he took pictures of people's in, people in the streets. Uh, and he literally just took pictures of the, the street itself and uh, just parts of the uh, corners of the streets of Paris, just literally documenting the street. And, and a lot of times when, when people start doing street photography, uh, that's what we usually start doing, just going out on the street and taking photographs of the street. And, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later as far as uh, what makes a better, in a way, uh, street photograph. Um, then after that we have Ouija, whose real name was Arthur Filik. He was, uh, was born in the Ukraine and then moved to New York. And he, he was shooting during the... Um, early 1900s, and he was a crime reporter. And he actually um, paid attention to the police scanner and got to the crime scenes before the police. So he recorded a lot of crime scenes in his photographs. That was, and then we were selling to, to the magazines, the, the newspapers. So he, that was his job. But at the same time, when he was shooting the crime scenes and a lot of the a, a lot of his pictures include the yeah, really bloody scenes of the the dead person for example but it also included the people that were, were looking at the crime scene and this is one of Ouija's uh, famous photographs and this is actually a crime scene and people were reacting the the woman in the middle is related to the person was that was killed but you can see all the other emotions that he captured just but by, by looking at the people that were actually witnessing the event. And I think that's, that's actually that a lot of street photographers do, instead of just looking at the actual event that's happening, a lot of times they just turn around and look at the people that are looking at the event. And then, and then you will find a lot of interesting things uh, in there, which is in this case, you know, a lot of different, different reactions, different emotions. Um, same thing, just documented the streets, of, the streets of New York. I'm not gonna show any of this crime scenes, but uh, you get the idea. Um, André Kertes, he was uh, born in, in Hungary and then moved to, to France. And um, Kertes actually had a big influence on Cartier-Bresson. 
Cartier-Bresson actually looked up to Cartes. In fact, he said, we all have something to owe to Cartes. And he recognized that whatever we did, Cartes did first. That's something that Cartier-Bresson did. Um, said. So Cartes was a very influential photographer and I'm going to show some, some of his photographs and this is uh, just uh, shows the uh, how street photographers sometimes wear for the perfect timing just when the person walks and the, and the train goes by and, and the, the reality of this picture is actually that he took several, several shots. If you look at the contact sheet you'll see that there are pictures that there are people, but there is no train, and then there's a train and no picture. So a lot of times you have to kind of sit and stay in the position, waiting for the things to to happen and to to for waiting for the right time. Let's say um, broken bench geometry shadows. And then we have Cartier-Bresson, um, who was a, a French photographer. And um, yeah, let's start with that. He was actually a, he was a reporter, he was a photojournalist. And he always, he actually didn't like to be a reporter. He didn't like to be a journalist. And um, he, so he took assignments and, but he also, took pictures for himself and he was actually called himself a surrealist photographer but his friend Robert Kappa who they they founded Magnum told him you cannot be known as a surrealist photographer because you'll never get any assignments you have to be a reporter but Cartier-Bresson did not like to be a reporter and, and he actually said reporters just report the facts and facts are boring so he wanted to actually do more than, than just that which is kind of what kind of uh, kind of, um, um, not a controversial, but um, he started my, the Magnum ag Agency, which is for, 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 doc, for photojournalists and for reporters. And at the same time, he set the trend for what is now called uh, street photography because of his going on the streets of Paris with his Leica and a 50 millimeter lens and recording the, the uh, life and paying attention to life. So he, he took shots like this, for example, just kids playing on the, on the street or by a wall. In this case, happened to be the Berlin Wall. So if, if it wasn't necessarily the Berlin Wall, it would be just a normal, regular scene. Um, but he also took other, other pictures that are probably, you're probably familiar with it, so I'm just going to go through them. Um, he liked to play also with a juxtaposition of... Uh, the environment and the subjects and the colors. And then the decisive moment. He was known for coining the term the decisive moment, which is basically waiting for the moment where all the elements in the frame come to the perfect point where the, the picture has this maximum expression. And that's when you hit the shutter. And, and this is one example of that. Just, um, But he also had some other, other pictures that were more sort of complex and that arise a lot of questions. And this is, a, this is a picture, for example, Alex Webb influenced all his pictures when, when, he, saw, when he saw this uh, particular uh, picture of Cartier-Bresson. He also experimented with shadows and triangles. And so these are uh, definitely more a different kind of photographs that he would take as if he was just a reporter. Robert Duanot, also a French photographer, friend, friend of Cartier-Bresson, and also documenting the streets of Paris. He, he liked to play the juxtaposition of the environment with the subject. And this is very common in street photography now. You'll see a lot of this. Uh, type of pictures and I've, I've done them and it's fun and it's uh, still going on. Also documented the streets of Paris just 
in this case, particular case, just different layers or all the subjects are in different layers and then at the bottom, just a little element of surprise. Robert Frank, who was very influential, um, one of the most influential photographers in the, in the 20th century and because of his book, The Americans, so that he, um, he published with, um, after he took a Guggen Guggenheim Fellowship, who they, and they told him to go and document life in, in America. And so he did that, and he, what he did was that he presented a, a, a picture of America that was at, up to that point was not being reflected in most of the magazines, because most of the magazines were showing images that were neat and clean and, and nice of America. He showed the dirty or bad side of America in a way, but also introduced other components to, to uh, photography, which was just blur and, and, and dark and shadows. And at the, at, when he published his book in 1959, um, he, uh, he, it wasn't well received. They all thought he was just very sloppy photographer. They didn't know how to focus. And he had all these uh, elements of graininess and stuff. So, but he introduced that element into photography, and then uh, only later on his uh, work was recognized. Um, Elliot Erwitt. Also, a, a, well, an American photographer, and um, Elliot was is um, and he's still alive. He's still doing a lot of uh, work photography, and he was very he used humor in his photographs a lot, and using the juxtaposition of uh, you know the the subjects with uh, with animals. He he loved to shoot dogs. A lot of his pictures have dogs in it. We actually gonna have a similar picture right there by Matt Stewart, <laughs> right? In that corner. So when we see street photography now, we see uh, different kinds of things that street photographers shoot, and, and this is also common. Whether it's and I'm gonna talk a little bit about this type of photograph in a little bit. Then Lee Freelander, also an American photographer, um, very influential in, in street photography. Um, and Lee Freelander used a lot of, he, he put himself in the picture a lot, so a lot of the times he will, you will see his shadows. He loved to shoot through glass reflections, he used the mirrors of cars and shooting uh, either through the mirror of the car or the little uh, side on side mirror. Um, and that's almost his signature, just his, his head on the, so he did a lot of that. Reflections and windows. So those are just those are just some of the uh, photographers that kind of set the pace for what a street photography would be um, during the, the 20th century, and there are many others. and And I think what what's now important is it's going to be interesting to see is what the next generation of street photographers are going to be, and I think that's where the uh, the Miami, the Street Photography Festival, for example, um, has a, a little bit of uh, part in showing the work of street photographers, especially of what's called street photography collectives, which are a group of people that get together and form a dedicated group that are, their purpose is to advance street photography and are creating really, really good 
uh, work in street photography. So I think that's what's going to be happen, uh, showing in the next in the next several years. So if you're not familiar with what a street photography collective is, I encourage you to look up street photography collectives and we feature them during the festival, at least two or three of the collectives. And there are several, in public is the most common. Um, it's, the, it's not the most common, the, the original one, let's say. And, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later as well. Any questions so far? They have different requirements. They usually form a group, sometimes in the same, the same country, the same city, and sometimes is um, all throughout the world. So the requirements is um, that you, 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 I'm not part of one, but uh, most of them require that you shoot on a regular basis and that you create a body of work that is consistent and that is significant, and and they all get together and and look at the, at the pictures and then give criticism and then, um, and then publish either on their website, sometimes in books. Yeah, so, um. Right, Brian? <laughs> so, yeah, and, so, and we can talk about that a little bit later. So anyway, so that, that was the, uh, just a sample of the uh, classic street photographers. Um, the Street Photography Club, and I tell you about, I created this the Street Photography Club. Um, well, it says there 2011, and now there are 1,200 people that joined. So there's a lot of interest in street photography, and I created the club. I started. I was like most people here probably have been taking photographs for a long time. I got a first camera when I was a teenager, and. Uh, but then uh, probably 12 years ago, I started shooting digital. Over the last six to seven years, I started just doing street photography. And I wanted to actually meet other street photographers here in Miami, and I created a street photography club. And the purpose of that was just to talk about street photography, learn about street photography. We actually talked about all the classic street photographers. We look at their work and try to see what and learn from it. And that was the purpose of the club. And from the club, and during that time, I was shooting a lot of street photography. I started a blog, writing a, in the blog about street photography. And from the club, actually, was born the idea of creating the festival later, later on, which actually ended up being sort of like I stopped shooting because then I couldn't even I couldn't enter my own event, so I I, I couldn't. I couldn't uh, participate, but but it, so I started shooting a lot during those during that time. Um, these are some pictures that I took. This is at the Overtown Rhythm and Arts Festival, which is one of my favorite events here. And and one of the things about street photography, you have to be, be very get close to people and just use wide angle lenses if possible. And just get in the in the middle of the middle of things. Street photographers usually do not use zoom lenses; they just use the wide angle, uh, 35, probably the 28, um, and just get in the middle of things. I like the geometry, triangles, and layers of people. I did the require jumping over the puddle uh, photograph, sort of like require if you're a street photographer. <laughs> so I got that out of the way. And I think that's what happens. I think we, when we look at the work of all the street photographers, we, the first thing is we try to sort of do the same thing. We say, OK, I can do the same thing. And then the next, the next step is actually the challenge of finding your own way. So a lot of times you're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna find that we do kind of the same things. And so the challenge that I, I always say is to find your own way and what really creates a lot of emotion in, in your photography. And that's a job that only one can, can do. And the only way to do it is to actually shoot a lot to go out and get it all out of your system and shoot and shoot and shoot and take all the pictures, take the paddle pictures. 
and keep and keep creating until you find something. So I did the juxtaposition. I think this type of pictures are fun and and it's always you still see a lot of that in street photography. Finding similarities with the uh, with the environment. Museums are great for street photography. Um, I really enjoy museums for street photography. The beach, definitely the beach. Uh, and that's another question that a lot of people ask about street photography. It has to be just on the, on the street. And it doesn't. It has to be, it, preferably in a public place. And the public place could be a museum. Well, <laughs> some would argue, is that a public place or not? But. Museums here. Huh? Museums here? Here. Museums here? here. As Europe, opposed to. In Europe? They don't, yeah. People still do. Actually, the, this guy told me don't take pictures in the museum. This is at the Getty Museum in, in LA. And he told me not to take pictures, so I, so I did with the shadow grabbing his, his ass. <laughs> and, uh, and I took that with my phone, actually. Actually, if you can get the, the, the street mode <coughs> and, and shoot from the hip, they, they'll never know you're doing something. Yeah. So, so yeah, you definitely museums are subways are the, also the same thing. Some can be uh, subways are are very good. The beach, like I said, is good too. I like this type of photographs that have different layers and, and gestures and Just me, or he looks like the bull. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. The same face, I guess. I don't know. I like taking pictures at the beach. Uh, Hollywood Beach, the boardwalk in Hollywood Beach is one of my favorite places. And in fact, well, I was shooting there one time and I ran into Costa Manos, who is also, he loves to shoot there. Um, it's a, it, I don't know if, you, I'm sure you've been to the boardwalk and it's a fantastic place for street photography. To me, one of the best places to shoot street photography in, my, in all this area is the Hollywood Beach boardwalk, by far. So just just coming back to the so as I was as I was shooting and and having all these pictures, I had a hard time sometimes really finding or deciding which ones I really like or which ones are really good. So uh, I wrote an article called "The Five Levels of Street Photography" in my blog a few years ago. Um, I'm not going to ask how many people read it because it's going to be embarrassing. Um, <laughs> But uh, because I wanted, to, I wanted to sort of find different categories or w where are there categories of street photographs that made one a little more, not, not better, but with have more impact than others. So I, try to cre I sort of created that system for myself and I wrote about it. And and I found different, I found five levels. I called it five levels of street photography. And in reality, are different, are five different types. And by no means this is scientific or comprehensive. It's just a, something that I use to edit or to look at photographs. And then I use that system for myself to see, okay, where am I going to, what is the purpose of this particular photograph? So, and 
so I call them five levels and level one through five. And the level one is the, is the photograph that just gives you information about a particular space. And it's the type of photograph that you'll see in documentaries or, or when you're um, on the news or, or the type of photograph that a lot of people starting street ph photography take, which is basically just going out on the street, taking pictures of whatever you find, and then call it a street, photo a street, a street photograph. So technically, photographing in the streets technically might be street photography, but it's not necessarily the most impact photograph that you're going to take if you take something that is just telling you documented what's happening on the street. And, some, and, I, and now I think about if we do really need to go ahead and just document the street. For that matter, st uh, Google Street View already done that. So that is taken care of. We don't really need to document any corner of the world because it's been done. But at the, at the beginning, we tend to shoot it, just go and, uh, and take a kid with a balloon on the street or, or a couple holding hands in the street and then and take it. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a picture that gives you some information, but it's, it's, uh, it doesn't elicit a lot of interest or questioning. Um, so I, I called it level one. And level two, there is another set of emotion that is triggered by the photograph, and in this case is joy or amusement. And, and this is where all this juxtaposition type of picture fall. Because they do trigger a little bit of uh, reaction of amusement. It's fun. It's nice to see. And just like with a joke, once you know the joke, then eventually it just is not as funny. So eventually with time, these type of pictures, when, once you've seen it, it it's, it's OK. But the, the effect doesn't last necessarily that long. But it's definitely something that street photographers do. And those are the examples from uh, Duano and Elliot Erwitt. Level, level three, I call the, there's an element of surprise in the picture. And this type of pictures, uh, the, the pictures that have different layers and where, where all the subjects are placed in different areas of the frame. And then one of the elements is, uh, is an element of surprise, either a gesture or a, or a particular subject or a particular effect. But you have diff all different levels th that the eye can go through, and then you have an element of surprise in there. And the decisive moment type of pictures when something just clicks at the right moment is a type of uh, this type of photograph that triggers surprise. So the first one was just information, the second was joy or amusement, the third one is surprise. So the, the fourth level is that it triggers a, a, some emotions of distress, and this could be confusion, it could be anger, it could be sadness. Most of the, the street photographs that are really good probably fall into this category, and these are tough to do. These are, tough, these are pictures that make you ask or that make you ask a lot of questions what's going on the first thing you you do, you say is what is going on in there how did that happen and and because it doesn't give you all the elements like the one for example that is the funny juxtaposition you see everything this one does you don't see everything you don't have all the elements there so you can create a story that can go on and on and on every time you look at this picture it could be a new story because of all the elements are not given. And I think that's when a, a photograph really has impact, when you can keep looking at it every time, and every time is, it could be something different, depending on your experience, depending on your emotion, depending on your environment. And I think that's more difficult to, to, to accomplish. This is Robert Frank, also the woman in the elevator. A lot of shadows and blur. And, all, and this, le, the level four type of pictures, a lot of blur and shadows and 
not all the elements of the body are there, uh, hands that are cut or the head doesn't show. All those elements are part of this type of, it creates a little bit of distress in the, in the viewer. And again, this is just a system that I designed for me. It's not, um, it's not necessarily the way uh, probably it should be. And level five is a mixed component of, of all the three and four. There's an element of surprise, there's an element of distress, there's an element of uh, interest and curiosity, and those are really uh, hard to do. So I'm going to show some of the uh, some of the uh, finalists of last year's, and this is basically what contemporary street photography is starting to look like. This is what people are doing in street photography in the world now, and again, these are from all over from over the the world. This was actually the winner. This took first prize. Um, last year. And to me, this is a, just a fantastic, amazing photograph. It just has pretty much all the elements that are made to be, you know, it has the, the interesting shadow, what's happening, a foot that is appearing out of nowhere, a half kid there, the gesture of about hitting the ball, the layers of the different subjects, you know, even this one right here. The decisive moment, this is the decisive moment, this is a decisive moment. That woman, <laughs> two seconds later, would not have been there. This wouldn't be there. Uh, the, it has the decisive moment, it has, uh, it, to me, it just has everything. When I saw it, I, I, I really, it's amazing. And this is, um, Swapnil is from India. So he's doing a lot of really good work and he sent several pictures of really, really good photograph. And this was the winner. <coughs> Question on the last one. Did, yep. Do you think that was staged? I don't think so. No, it's I don't think so. I don't I don't know. It'll be looks like a little hard to do. But um, I don't know about the shadow. And it's hard to tell. You see the shadow, you just wait, right? Right. And you stay there with the shadow and wait for stuff to happen. Just right. Know what see, no? Yeah. So I don't think it was, no, but no, well, I don't know. You move out, you move but I don't know. Again, don't ask, don't tell policy in, 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 in street photography. No, but you know, uh, uh, there is an element of, an element of, um, honesty also when you shoot street for photography and then send it in. And as far as getting the stage or getting the, the subjects to collaborate or to help you, um, that's, you know, that uh, a lot of people do it different ways. Elliot Erwitt, some people say that he used to do something for the dogs to do stuff and set it up. So this was from Thailand. Also, again, wonderful photograph. Was that a winner? That was not a winner, no. From Bangladesh. A lot of good comp elements there too. Shooting through windows or reflections, always a good thing. You get very interesting compositions and, and emotions there. Sahi from Israel. From Turkey. Triangles always work really good. Shadows. 
Edas Wong from Hong Kong. Dimitri from Sweden. Looking for gestures and uh, timing and gestures, so. <laughs> they require <laughs> juxtaposition of the dog and the head. It could have been Elliot Erwitz's shot. It's exactly what it was, but it's a great shot. Is that Sam? <laughs> Kirsten, is that Sam? No. Well, that's a loss of huh? That's a loss of oh. <laughs> Someone was bored. <laughs> Again, that little element of surprise there and a little humor there too. Olga Titova from Russia. A lot of really, really good work from Thailand. A lot of really good work from Russian street photographers. India. India, the same thing too. A lot of, uh, and in, in fact, there are a lot of, <clears throat> we're inviting one of the collectives that are invi inviting this year to the festival because we invite them and we show the work of all the members and we have a special part of the gallery where we show their work. And one of the, one of the collectives that we're inviting is from Thailand. And they have about 15 members and they're really, really fantastic work, the, these guys in Thailand. So I think it's important to, to recognize their work. So. Kazakhstan. Tabe Pong <coughs> is doing fantastic work. This is a, that's a name you can probably start following either on Instagram or Tabe Pong Pratung Wong from Thailand, if you can remember. <laughs> um, this guy is doing amazing work. Really, really good stuff. So he's gonna be here also next year. And he was the winner, uh, when was it, Veronica, two Last years? Year. Last year? I he mean, 2014. Yeah. 2014, he was the winner with a, with a different shot this. So that's it.